Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing on about 154 square feet of bed space in my backyard. So I think I need to point out that <laughs> I wear these sweatshirts all the time um, when I'm in the garden. So literally, you may see me with this on in like every video, <laughs> but I do wash it. Um, I like them, they're very warm. Um, I like what they say, I feel like it gives good vibes. So if you see me with them on constantly, it's because I wear it when I'm out in the garden. <laughs> um, um, they're from Roots and Refuge, Jess's farm. Um, I'm sure everybody, or most people, if, if not everyone, uh, knows about Jess. And I love her channel and I love her merchandise too. What I am about to do is I am tired of moving my plants in and out because our weather has not broke. Um, I try not to leave the tomatoes out under 40 and I probably should not be leaving them out under 50. But what I'm going to do instead is go ahead and put the peppers and the tomatoes in the same um, tin pans. So I have all my plants in tin pans. Um, and then I'm only gonna move the other things out, like the sunflowers, nasturtiums, um, basil. I'm gonna move that stuff out and I probably should keep the basil in too. Not sure. Um, we have a 40 degree night tonight. Then we'll have 50s uh, for like six days or so, six or seven days. And then we go back down into the 40s. So trying to save myself the time and energy of taking everything back outside and having to bring it in. Um, oh, and I'm gonna keep the eggplant in too. So those plants like heat um, and they can be stunted from what I've read um, and kind of I think from what I know from last year. They can be stunted by temperatures that's too low at night. Um, and I'm not putting these out like in the garden, I'm going to put them in the greenhouse, but then I'm going to leave them in the greenhouse instead of bringing them in and out. Um, so I'm going to leave the peppers, I'm going to leave the eggplant, and I'm going to leave the tomatoes inside. And let me make sure I explain this correctly. All of these flowers, I mean plants or flowers, can stay outside. They're not going to die. Um, so they all, they'll die at 32. Uh, a freeze will kill tomatoes and peppers. But what I want to make sure is that I don't stunt them. Um, and so that's why I'm making a choice to leave the peppers, tomatoes, and eggplants inside. I also have tomatoes I need to pot up. I started them after I started um, the ones that's in the red cups. And these have been started since like December. They're eggplant since like December. I was trying to do like an overwinter thing. <laughs> um, it's just a test, but they've lived. They've lived all of that time and they don't look horrible. So that's pretty exciting. Those are peppers. Shishito and a large red pepper. And so I'm kind of looking at these. When I bought them in, they were like a little bit yellow, a little bit, um, I guess a little bit worrisome. This is an assertion. So now I'm thinking maybe I should leave them all inside. <laughs> I'm just trying to uh, cut down on my on all the work. That's why I started stuff so late this year. Cause if I hadn't, I would have been trying to make this decision earlier. <laughs> so those are the tomatoes that need to be potted up. So I'll probably leave them inside and go ahead and pot them up. But for the first time, for the first time, and to my excitement, I grew sweet potato slips. And they look really good. I don't know what that one long one is doing and how it happened, but anyway. Yeah, grew sweet potato slips. Pretty happy about that. And the marigolds are looking really good too. Pretty happy about, about all of that. Yeah. Nice. Nice! And this is coming from a person who tried to start seeds like several times. Um, before I got into it. So what I, my point in saying that is, if you're struggling to start seeds, actually do a little bit of research, like reading, um, because it is simple, but you do have to make sure you give them the right environment to grow in. Like, look at that borage. 
right? Looks like I brought those from the store. I'm proud, I'm, I, I am proud of that. <laughs> That's some, those are the winter squash. Pretty happy. Like, I mean, I'm just, I'm elated that I actually grew these from seed. And you can grow from seed too. You just gotta do a little bit of research because I failed several times at starting seeds. And now, unless a seed doesn't germinate in a decent amount of time, I really don't go to the big box store to buy seedlings anymore. So I'm gonna move these outside and hope for the best. All right, so those are all outside. I think I got everything. That just leaves the tomatoes and the peppers. And I left the sweet potato slips in here too, so, uh, cause they like heat, like you plant them out when it gets much warmer. I am going to move outside cause I need to start getting my trellises up. I'm gonna work on putting uh, my trellises up. So there's gonna be a trellis that spans this whole garden bed. Um, and this is gonna be where I plan to grow, I believe, melons. I have it written down in my book. So I'm gonna put this up with cattle panel and it's already cut from last year. So that is a plus. And I'm gonna put it up with T-post. So. There'll be a T-post at this end, a T-post at the other end, and I'll probably put a T-post right in the middle as well. So, let's get to work on that. So this is cut from last year, um, and it fits right across this bed, just like that. Um, last year, I put it dead in the center of the bed, this year, I'm gonna put it on the back end of the bed and leave a little bit of space because I wanna do flowers on the front end. I don't want them to be shaded. The flowers or plants that were on the back side last year, um, they ended up getting shaded and they did not last long. So that's what I'm gonna do. I do wish, I do wish <laughs> that I had a um, T-Post driver, but I don't, I have a mallet. Uh, it has been raining, so I'm hopeful that it will be a little bit easier to drive these in, uh, but we will see. These may be you post, I'm not sure, but it's just like, you know, a normal post, and I'm gonna put it just about an inch or two away from the side, if you can see. So inch away because this has to go down and into the soil. I'm actually gonna turn it because I'm gonna put my cattle panel on this side. Um, so I put it like right above it to help it hold a little bit more. Um, but just gonna bang it down in there. The rain did help. It's going down much easier than normal. My son, so you know they say south facing. My son during the day comes from this way, which is why I said I don't want to put it in the middle of the bed this year. Uh, everything in the front will be able to get sun and the melons will get sun because they're going to be growing up anyway. Now we're going to grab this and I'm going to sit it up a little bit further off the ground. Some people say you need two people. Um, I put up all of my trellises with just me. So what I'm gonna do is stand in the middle, go ahead and connect it to the middle, and then it'll hold up and I can connect the rest of the sides. So it's about five notches up from, from the ground. Gives it more space to grow up. And I'm just gonna take my zip tie, tighten it to the post. Voila, 
it is up there. And now I just need to go to the side post and tighten it. And it does not have to be perfect. It just needs to be strong enough to stand up and hold your vegetables as they grow. Once you get them all on, you can go back and pull your zip ties a little bit tighter. There's about five zip ties on each post, but I'll just plant right down here at the bottom, uh, probably three to four between each post and they'll just grow right on up that trellis. Uh, so that is what I'm gonna be doing today is getting my trellises up. I'll show you how I do an arch trellis by myself as well. <laughs> T-post and that's going to hold it for you. Just like that. Something like that. Get the other side in. And now, you can attach that to the T-post. <laughs> if you're doing it by yourself, cannot be afraid of a little bit hard work and a little bit of a uh, heavy breathing. Just make sure it's lined up as best that it, as it can be. Um, and then try to lift up a little bit so you can get that extra space off the ground. Attach it to the teapot with your uh, zip ties. And there you have it. Uh, trellising all by yourself. <laughs> Um, if you don't have a significant other or I probably could have got my son, but I can do it by myself I just want to show you all really quick as I end this video because I haven't done much other than put trellises up I have a trellis here so you can see it right there I have the trellis we put up together I have the other trellis that we put up together I have this trellis, which tomatoes are gonna grow on that one. And I have the two at the opening. This one is from last year. I put the one up in the back. Um, this year, that's gonna grow amaranth, a pretty blue butterfly flower that only one germinated. So I may just put some in the ground um, and see what happens. I have one more cattle panel that's gonna be the full cattle panel like this that's gonna go in this area right here. That'll give me seven trellises. Um, they're gonna grow my melons because melons vine and I don't have a lot of space. They're gonna grow my winter squash because they vine as well. Um, they're going to grow beans. Like I said, amaranth loofah and a pretty blue flower. And then the last one that I have to put up is going to grow my cucumbers. Um, I'm going to wait until we get some rain because that's going directly into the ground and I know that's gonna be hard. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like if you're feeling it share it um and don't forget to visit me on instagram at miss ms asia spratley uh where i post about everything going on in the garden pretty much every day this saturday i'm gonna do a chicken video um because everyone asked so i will show you how i take care of my chickens in my backyard garden bye